Fallout 4 is a pretty big game, but there's only so many challenges you can face with a vanilla playthrough. So, to spice things up, I installed a whole bunch of mods to completely transform Fallout 4 into a zombie survival game. Now, the entire map has been filled to the brim with ghoul hordes, and those hordes will now have varying ghoul types, which sport unique and deadly combat abilities. Not only that, but the ghouls can resurrect with full health if they aren't killed with a headshot, and to simulate people getting zombified, they will turn into a ghoul upon death. All these mods make Fallout 4's gameplay way more fun, but at the same time, it's also painfully difficult. So, I'm also wondering, can I survive Fallout 4 modded into a zombie apocalypse? Let's find out. The only rule for this playthrough is that I have to exterminate every feral ghoul I see. I'm basically gonna go Doom Slayer mode on the entire ghoul population, and hopefully, I'll be able to not only just survive, but also cleanse the commonwealth of the feral menace. First order of business is to customize my character to look like Giga Chad. This ain't gonna be an easy playthrough, so it's absolutely necessary in order to maximize my survivability and combat effectiveness. I'm also using an alternate start mod, so instead of having to suffer through the opening sequence for the one millionth time, I can immediately begin the game from the cryopod in Vault 111. I then hop out of the pod and head to this computer to set my stats. I didn't have any special build in mind for this playthrough. Uh, most of my stats are around average, except for strength and intelligence. I put 7 into strength for extra carrying capacity and melee damage, but I sacrificed all my points in intelligence so I could use them for more combat-focused stats. Intelligence is highly overrated. Going monkey mode and using brute force is always the most effective tactic, and that was pretty much going to be my entire plan for taking on the endless waves of feral ghouls. Before going any further into the vault, I made sure to set my game to survival difficulty to make it as unforgiving as possible. That means I have to manage hunger, thirst, disease, and I can't fast travel either. I did, however, keep auto-saving enabled, and that's because I wanted to prevent any unnecessary loss of progress should my game with over 700 mods decide to crash for some odd reason. Spoiler alert, it does. Multiple times, in fact, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. After collecting some loot and juking out the rad roaches, I grabbed a handy dandy tactical tablet and was then able to tag three skills. I chose barter so that I would get better prices at shops, gunsmith for crafting useful attachments, and medicine because I knew I'd be taking lots of damage and would need to heal constantly. After that, I opened up the vault, then headed out into the zombie infested wasteland above. Luckily, there were no ghouls waiting in ambush just outside the vault, but there was a combat drone ready to shred me into little pieces. However, it was distracted by a giant hermit crab, so I took my chance and hightailed it to Sanctuary. Before you say it, no, I am not going to be scrapping everything in Sanctuary to farm XP. I specifically downloaded a mod which disables XP gain from crafting to prevent that exploit. While in Sanctuary though, I did make sure to grab some useful loot, including the special book, in which I chose to level up Endurance. The most notable loot I grabbed would be the bubbled up Ruger Mini-14 stashed in the root cellar, which happened to come with 200 rounds of 556. It would prove to be quite the handy tool in the near future. After looting Sanctuary of all its valuables, I headed to Red Rocket and was greeted by the goodest boy Dogmeat. I decided he would be my one and only faithful companion for this run. It'd be fitting too, seeing as it's a zombie playthrough, it'd be kinda like that very wholesome zombie movie called I Am Legend. Except in this story, the dog doesn't die, because Dogmeat is an eldritch being incapable of being killed by any lowly mortals. Before delving headfirst into Concord, I decided to clear out this small raider camp to test out my new Mini-14, and it proved quite effective at dispatching the raiders. However, while I was looting their bodies, I heard a scream most foul. To a zombie! Whew. I had just witnessed a human turning feral for the first time, but I made sure to kill him for good by blowing his head off. I then went back to Red Rocket, took a fat nap, and got ready for the next day. Feeling fully rested and prepared, I headed into Concord with dog meat at my side. I saw one ghoul in the road and decided to pick him off, but that might have been a mistake because immediately after that, his entire extended family hopped out of a clown car and started chasing me down, probably to ask me about my car's extended warranty. And so, I shot down their advance with a spray of 556. All the while, Dogmeat charged in headfirst, only to get stampeded by the horde. On the other hand, I implored the more advanced strategy of slowly walking backwards to keep them from overwhelming me. 
I also threw some explosives down to take out huge chunks of ferals all at once. And after a few more grenades, I completely eradicated the horde of flesh-hungry beasts. There were a few dismembered stragglers though, so I put them out of their misery. And there you have it, I successfully killed my first ghoul horde without a hitch. Mostly thanks to some doomsday prepper who left behind his lovely rifle. That and a couple grenades I found in a mailbox. I had to take a moment to admire the absolute carnage I had just created. It was beautiful, but that wasn't even the full horde. Conquered was still crawling with those crusty creatures, so I continued my journey to wipe them out, making sure to heal dog meat along the way. Before heading into the Museum of Freedom, I decided to stop by the speakeasy for some easy loot. One of the doors inside of the speakeasy was locked, and since my tiny brain didn't know how to unlock it, I said FBI open up and kicked it down. But guarding one of the chests inside the room would be two ghoul children. I'm sorry, little one, but I must do this. Oh! I just killed a ghoul child. I also so happened to find a note that told the story of the two ghoul children and their mother. Just like almost everyone else, they had been ghoulified as a result of the Great War. The mother did not turn feral, but her children did. So she locked them in this room to keep them from eating her alive. But in order to keep their hunger sated, she fed them the dead bodies of her neighbors. Now that is absolutely brutal. So after considering the context, I did the right thing by putting those two kids out of their misery. With a clear conscience, I then left the speakeasy. As soon as I loaded in, I was greeted with a rotten hand in my face, along with a pop-up that said my leg had been broken. In classic Bethesda fashion, the NPCs had loaded in before I did, and they got the drop on me. I was able to kill the two ambushers, but one of them was so stinky that the raw stench was eating me alive. As I went to heal myself, I was attacked by an invisible ghoul. What the f- Huh? Was- This ghoul was just invisible? <laughs> what? He took a big bite out of my neck, thus killing me. Proving that no, I could not survive Fallout 4 modded into a zombie apocalypse. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys in the next video. Just kidding, of course. This is not a permadeath run, so I'm gonna keep going until I can prove that I can survive this, uh abomination of a game that I've created. So I reloaded my save, and this time all the ghouls were indeed visible, and I was able to kill all three of them. But right as I was trying to heal, I was blindsided by reinforcements. With my health already low and my leg crippled, I didn't have many options. I got slapped around silly by the ghouls, and eventually I succumbed to the rot that was inflicted upon me. Once again proving that no, I could not survive Fallout 4 modded into a zombie apocalypse. Okay, but third time is the charm though. I loaded in once more to the same autosave to immediately be greeted by a ghoul giving me a kiss of death on the neck, but still, I was able to take them out. This time with an American 180 I'd stashed in my back pocket, and thankfully, this time the reinforcements did not immediately bum rush me, so I was able to get away and properly heal. I then continued my battle and conquered, clearing out the rest of the ferals. Dogmeat and I proved to be quite the duo. He would ferociously maul the ghouls as if they were newborn babies, while I would pop their skulls like birthday balloons. Oh, get him, Dogmeat! Yeah! Nice, teamwork. Ooh! Brutal. After a long and arduous battle, I had cleared Conquered of the ghoul threat. Mostly. But I still had to deal with the raiders in the museum, so I headed in there to save Preston and the gang. Thanks to this neat laser guard I found off a of dead Minuteman, Clearing the museum was a breeze. When I talked to Preston, I thought it was funny how he mentioned that they were driven out of Lexington due to the ghoul threat, only to run into Concord, which also happened to be a major ghoul hotspot. I can't blame him though, nobody gave him a heads up on all the mods I installed. Anyway, I then got in the power armor on the roof of the museum, yoinked me a free minigun, and was then tasked with clearing Concord of all the raiders. And, uh, Deathclaw. I only had 70 rounds of 7.62, so I had to make every shot count. I used a manual critical on the Deathclaw and unloaded all of my ammunition in his direction. I spent every last round I had, but it was just enough to kill him. I reported my success to Preston, and they headed out to Sanctuary as the sun was setting. At this point, I got a notification on my screen saying that ferals were hunting. This specific mod adds in a feature where feral ghouls randomly spawn at nighttime to hunt you down, so I'd always have to be on the lookout when exploring after dark. My power armor's fusion core was empty, I was over encumbered, and my leg was crippled, but I decided to slow walk back to Red Rocket anyway. Luckily, I did not encounter any ferals along the way. 
Uh, this time, that is. The next morning, I decided to help out Preston by getting a settlement to support the Minutemen. It would be the settlement at Ten Pines Bluff, and so I headed east in that direction, but I made some pit stops along the way. At the robotics disposal ground, I activated a Securitron, and together we fought a Deathclaw. We were successful in killing the beast, but the Securitron was uh, decommissioned in the process. Whoa! Look at those sick moves you, you just pulled off. No! Sentry bot! And I will forever thank him for his sacrifice. Next stop was the satellite station. I could have totally skipped this area if I really wanted to, but I'm glad I didn't because it had some of the best loot that would prove extremely useful for the rest of the run. I was easily able to take out the raiders guarding the outside, including a raider pyro, who had a pristine M2 flamethrower, along with plenty of fuel. It would later prove to be the perfect weapon to take out ghoul hordes. I then snuck into the satellite station and began picking off the raiders inside. I would have to be very careful though, because the raider boss inside was armed with a minigun, and it could easily kill me in a few milliseconds. Thankfully, my bad aim paid off, because a raider that I had just killed without a headshot had transformed into a liquor, and it distracted Akak enough for me to get some free shots on her. Oh, dude! No way! Oh, she's looking at me! Oh, nice! <laughs> oh, shit. Right after that, though, a raider pyro rounded the corner and nearly burnt me into a crisp, but I killed him just in time and survived with a sliver of health to spare. Later on, I finally made it to Ten Pines Bluff and asked one of the settlers what they needed help with. Turns out, I would have to kill a raider boss in Lexington to get them on my side, so that's where I headed. While on my journey to Lexington, I ran into Bedford Station. I scouted out the area and could see through my scope that there was indeed a whole pack of ghouls along with a giant feral tank. Near the tank, I spotted an exploder, so my plan was to shoot him to cause a whole bunch of splash damage on the horde. Unfortunately though, my plans were foiled by a couple dogs who sniffed me out. One of them nearly bit my arm off, so I went medieval on them with a bow and arrow. Now my position was compromised and the entire horde was headed my way. At this point, I was on quite the kill streak, and this exact moment was the perfect time to call in my UFO air support that I had been saving this whole time. Not really though, I have no clue where that UFO came from. Apparently, the aliens hate ghouls just as much as I do, because even though it's supposed to always be hostile towards me, it uh, never focused its attention on me and we ended up fighting together to exterminate the ferals. After all, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And for the time being, this UFO and the aliens inside were my battle buddies. That right there seems like it could be quite an epic plot for a movie. Call it, uh, Zombies vs. Aliens, and there you go. The next guaranteed Hollywood blockbuster. While I was busy thinking about the script for my new movie idea, I was ambushed from behind by a liquor, and he absolutely deleted my health bar in just two hits. I was on death's door, but I activated a manual critical and went gangsta mode on him with my Glock. <laughs> thus eviscerating his big mushy brain, and he was so flabbergasted that he did a funny spin in the air. Shortly after that, I found the feral tank waiting in ambush behind a warehouse, and I didn't want to take any chances trying to tango with that behemoth, so I hopped on the roof of the warehouse and began shooting at him. The big dumb oaf didn't know how to counter my big brain play, so he cowered away in fear. As he ran away, I pulled out a fat man and launched a mini nuke directly at his Achilles tendon, but his name checks out, so he absolutely tanked it like nothing happened. Completely unfazed, he tried running back to my position, and at this moment, the UFO swooped in and began gunning him down. Realizing he had no way of hitting us, the tank commenced a tactical retreat and ran out of sight. As was my duty, I hunted him down. Turns out he was once again waiting in ambush behind a building, and he caught me off guard. Just as he was about to flatten me into a pancake, I hopped into a train car and avoided his attack. The big pimple didn't know what to do, so again, he ran away. His tactics are truly beyond my comprehension. He ran off into the forest, no doubt trying to lure me in there so he could ambush me once more. But I simply camped on these stairs and beamed him from afar. He must have been a little angry with my behavior at this point, because he tried rushing me one last time. But I had the high ground, and the tank didn't stand a chance. I pulled out my double barrel shotgun and unleashed a devastating critical headshot, thus killing the oversized tumor. And he comically fell over like a statue. Now that was quite the boss battle. I had just killed my first feral tank without dying a single time. 
all thanks to my ingenious strategy to place myself in unreachable positions. Some may call it cheese, but life isn't fair, and I was going to do anything I had to do to survive this godforsaken world. After the battle was over, I noticed my alien buddies were nowhere to be found, but it wasn't going to be the last time that we saw them. Before heading into Lexington, I decided to stop by the Drumlin Diner to sell some loot. I killed the druggies threatening tree and then immediately sold their guns. Just down the road was Trash Can Carla, so I headed her way as well. Turns out she was playing a staring contest with a Yagwai, and I rudely interrupted it. So the bear rushed me at full speed, and before I knew it, I was on the ground being mauled by a mutated bear. All the while, Carla was trying to help out by using her bare fist. Even though the blood from my neck was spewing on the pavement like a fire hydrant, I somehow got back up and killed the Yagwai with a handmade 38 special. Unable to process his defeat, the Yagwai launched into outer space. Or perhaps the aliens were just abducting him. At this point, I realized I had left Dogbeat at Red Rocket the whole time, so I went back to get him. While I was there, I did some inventory management, witnessed a floating Radhorner, which could teleport, and also I crafted a special tactical doggy fest for Dogmeat. Then we launched our assault on Lexington. The place was loaded with ferals, so I made sure to come prepared. In an attempt not to alert the entire ghoul population of Lexington, I stealthily engaged the ferals on the outskirts with a bow and arrow. It was going fine, but a bunch of ghouls found me anyway, and things escalated quickly. I had no choice but to whip out the M2 flamethrower, and it melted the horde like butter in a furnace. The only downside to the flamethrower, though, is that it's not the best weapon for getting headshots, so some of the ghouls did come back to life, but I made sure to double tap all of them with my Glock Glock 9000. <laughs> I would go on to use the same combat tactic throughout the Battle of Lexington. It proved to be quite an effective strategy. At one point though, I climbed up the fire escape of this building so I could kill the raiders at the top and secure their loot. But Dogmeat had some trouble doing the same, and he fell down the stairs and got a big owie. So I went to rescue him once again, but right as I went to heal Dogmeat, a liquor ambushed me. I couldn't move around or cancel the stim pack animation, so I just sat there helplessly while the liquor filleted my meat, thus killing me, proving that no, I could not survive Fallout 4 modded into a zombie apocalypse. My last save was near Drumlin Diner, so I had to commence my assault on Lexington all over again. I wasn't too mad though, because frying zombies is my favorite pastime. Since I was right next to it, I decided to stop by the Super Duper Mart for some fresh groceries. But all I found were empty shelves and feral customers who wanted to eat me alive. It was looking like a dang Walmart on Black Friday in there, so I made sure to quell the competition with deadly force. Just as I had seemingly cleared the whole store, I tried to heal myself with a chem known as Stem Crack, but as soon as I clicked on it, it crashed my game. This would be the first crash of the entire playthrough, and surprisingly enough, it would be from something as mundane as trying to use a healing item. Because of the crash, I had to clear the Super Duper Mart all over again. While I was trying to kill a ghoul climbing through a window, another liquor ambushed me from behind. I was caught with my pants down and my shotgun empty, so I frantically clicked on my hotkeys to pull out a different weapon. The liquor got me down to 1 HP, but I whipped out my 38 revolver, and just as he was lunging at me, I ended him with a lucky shot directly to the brain, thus killing him and proving that yes, I am now more capable of surviving Fallout 4 modded into a zombie apocalypse. After clearing the Super Duper Mart, I continued exterminating the ghouls outside. I ran into my second feral tank, but he was already low on health due to some raiders shooting at him, and with my M2 flamethrower, I melted the tank in mere seconds. After clearing every ghoul in sight, I finally headed to the main objective, the Corvega assembly plant. I originally intended to snipe every raider on the outside from the highway, but I found a drainage pipe which led directly into the factory, so I chose the stealth route instead. I easily made my way through the factory, killing each raider one by one, and eventually I made it to the final room with the big boss, Jared, from Subway. To ensure he would not be tempting me with his $5 footlong, I sniped his head off from a distance. As I was picking off his goons, I was blindsided by a raider pyro and couldn't see anything except for flames in my face, so I tried to run away and heal, but the napalm was already stuck onto my skin, and the burn damage quickly consumed my health bar, thus killing me, proving that no, I could not survive Fallout 4 modded into a war crime simulator. And so, 
I had to clear the entire factory once again, but once I got to the room with Jared, I made sure to kill the pyro first, then Jared. After the contract was complete, I yeeted out of the factory and headed back to Ten Pines Bluff, where I told the settlers of my success. As I was heading back to Red Rocket, the sun had already set, and ferals were out hunting, but none of them spawned in to come hunt me down, so I made it back home safely. The next morning, I informed Preston of my success, and he granted me the rank of general. After having to kill hundreds of ghouls just to secure one settlement to our cause, I wasn't so sure if I wanted to do that again, but I could always decide which faction I wanted to end the game with later on. Preston then tasked me with helping out Grey Garden though, so I did head in that direction, and I talked with the robots. But I didn't feel like clearing out a whole stronghold of super mutants, so instead I set my eyes on Diamond City. As I made my way into the outskirts of Boston, I ran into a giant pack of ferals, and also our alien buddies in the UFO showed up again to help me out. I'm glad they did, because this horde of ferals was perhaps the largest one I had faced all at once so far. One of them latched onto me and bit my neck, so naturally, the attack crippled my leg. Either way, I did manage to wiggle out before the whole horde could swarm me. As soon as I saw another giant wave of ferals rush me, I had to pull out the M2 flamethrower. My leg was crippled, so I had no choice but to stand my ground as the ferals surrounded me. But due to the destructive nature of the M2, all I had to do was stand still, hold down the trigger, and sway the nozzle left and right. Just as I was finishing up with this wave of ferals, our UFO buddies crashed into a building and fucking exploded. The only culprit that could have been capable of taking them down was this combat drone, so I made sure to avenge my extraterrestrial comrades. I then found their bodies on the pavement. Their skulls melted and caved in from the explosion. Needless to say, it was going to be a closed casket funeral. Rest in peace, my friends. Your sacrifice will not be forgotten. But this was no time to mourn. I had a duty to exterminate every feral ghoul in the commonwealth. And the next order of business was to clear out Hangman's Alley. It's the only settlement within Boston itself. And it's right next to Diamond City, so it's a pretty good location to have control of. The raiders living there, though, weren't paying me rent. So, like the generous landlord I am, I evicted them with deadly force. They put up quite the resistance though, and gunned me down to near zero HP, so naturally I backed away to heal. To my own detriment though, I chose to use an expired stem pack, and as soon as the rusty needle impacted my skin, I died instantly, proving that no, I would not survive a visit to the doctor's office to get a flu shot. On my next attempt, instead of bashing through the front door, I decided to get on a nearby rooftop where I could gain the high ground advantage. On the roof, I had the superior angle on the raiders, plus I could rain down grenades from above. With my genius strategy, I easily killed the brain-dead AI and claimed Hangman's Alley as my own. I dropped off a bunch of loot here and then headed out to get even more loot. One of my favorite stops is the hardware town, but of course, it's occupied by raiders. Normally, if you go in through the front door, you'll get lured into an ambush, but if you go in the back, you can instead ambush them, and that's exactly what I did. I cleared out the raiders easy peasy, grabbed their goodies, then headed back outside, only to be greeted by a gigantic gang of gangrenous green goblins. Holy shit, look at all of them! Whoa! <laughs> look at all these ghouls! Jeez. Oh <laughs> yeah, baby! Yes, yeah, sir. After finishing off the stragglers, I then headed down the road to Diamond City. For some reason, a raider was just chilling right outside the main entrance to Diamond City, so I did the right thing and ended her adventuring days with an arrow to the face. As I went to grab her loot though, my game crashed, so I had to reload my latest save and kill all of those ghouls all over again. As I mentioned earlier though, I wasn't even too mad about it, because clearing out giant hordes of ferals provides me with great pleasure. It was basically the same result here too. I used the M2, a car explodes, and all the ghouls die. Then I head to Diamond City, this time with no raider, and I'm able to head inside. For quite some time, I didn't do anything too important. I simply traded around with the various vendors in Diamond City, and also cleared out some more raiders and ghouls nearby. I didn't start the main quest just yet. I wanted to avoid it until I was fully able to prove that I could survive this zombie apocalypse. To be fully prepared, I would need a strong melee weapon I could use in the scenario that I run out of ammo, so I headed down the road to the Boston Commons to get myself a said powerful melee weapon. 
I know what you're thinking. It's the power fist from Swan, isn't it? No, you thought wrong. But it is right next to him. Inside this abandoned sword museum, there's a bunch of old blades waiting to be revived. This is the treasure I came for. But I did make sure to kill Swan anyway. Not because I had to, but because it would boost my ego and my survivability rating. With this M2 Benelli I picked off a of raider earlier, I was able to take him down with relative ease. Swan probably ate around 100 or so shotgun pellets directly to the face, but that's pretty fair considering that he probably eats lead cereal for breakfast. I then headed back to Diamond City, where I did some more trading, including buying a whole bunch of junk at terrible prices. It was totally worth it though, because I used that junk to repair a motorcycle that was sitting right outside the main gate. Since fast traveling was disabled, using a vehicle would be the only method to quickly traverse the commonwealth. Vehicle mods for Fallout 4 are very crude and janky, but you know what, it's, uh, it's better than nothing. Anyway, I used the motorcycle to travel all the way back to Red Rocket to pick up all the loot and ammunition I had left there. Also, uh, dog meat. I had left them there once again. Not because I forgot, but because he was eating up way too many stim packs, and I needed time to restock before he could travel with me again. Purchasing all that junk for the motorcycle was very costly, so I wanted a way to earn my money back, and the best way to get some easy caps is the Diamond City's Blues Quest. To start the quest, I went to the Colonial Tap House in the Upper Stands, in which I witnessed a man named Paul get absolutely rocked by the bar owner named Cook. Paul the Punching Bag then asked me to go back into the bar with him to confront Cook. But Paul is a loser, so I left him at the drive when we walked inside. Paul pulled out a gun on Cook and fired a few rounds, but missed every single shot. He must have also forgotten to fully load his magazine, because he then rushed Cook with his bare fist, and Cook answered with the butt of his shotgun, thus killing Paul in a single hit. But he made the fatal mistake of not killing Paul with a headshot. Oh shit, he turned- <laughs> He turned into a zombie! <laughs> After we had shared the brotherly bond of watching a man die twice, I gained Cook's trust, and he let me in on his plan to ambush a Kim's deal, and so we headed that way. I launched my attack with a frag grenade, followed by a spray of bullets from my mac and cheese tin, and it easily took out all the goons. Cook said he wanted to split the Kims between us though, so in order to maximize my gains, I had to get rid of him. And I did so with the most comical timing possible. <laughs> There's no plausible way I could explain to Morowski how I wasn't involved in this, unless I die here along with everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be unfortunate. Now the Kims were all mine and I traded most of them away for a hefty sum of caps. Were my actions morally apprehensible? Uh, perhaps. But in this world, you're either a smart fella or a fart smeller, and I don't have a brap fetish. Anyway, while at Hangman's Alley the next day, I had completely forgotten about the blades I retrieved from the museum, so before going any further, I made sure to use one to craft a glorious Nippon Steel Katana. And finally, I was now prepared for any scenario. All I had to do now was prove to the world that I could take on anything it threw my way. And the perfect place to do that would be Cambridge. You see, Jimbo, Cambridge has the highest concentration of ghouls in the entire game, so it's the perfect place to test my zombie killing skills. I knew it would be far from an easy task though, so I came prepared with something that I had been saving this whole time. I walked into Cambridge with my sword drawn, ready to cut down any ghouls that came my way. But after I spotted a feral tank, along with dozens of ghouls, I then pulled out the minigun and began hosing them down. No ghoul stood a chance. Most died within a couple shots, and even the feral tank went down with ease after a few seconds of being subjected to my punishment. So far, it was looking like a cakewalk. The ghouls only slapped me a few times, while I absolutely annihilated them. Oh yeah, baby! Get nothing on me. There was one straggler though, so I decided to show off by ending him with my katana. But my own hubris would be my downfall. <laughs> oh! I was once again ambushed by a licker, who killed me in a single slash, proving once again that I have a serious issue with getting ambushed by lickers. And so I tried again. This time I stayed a little further back to minimize my blind spot. In just 250 rounds from my minigun, 
I managed to take down multiple ghouls, two liquors, and two feral tanks. To conserve my ammunition for later, I used my katana to deal with the remainder of the ghouls in College Square. I did run into some resistance, but it wasn't anything I couldn't handle. Dogmeat, on the other hand, got absolutely mauled by a liquor and exploder, so I turned their heads into fine red paste with my shotgun. After College Square was dealt with, I decided to help out the Brotherhood Recon team just down the road. They were fending off ferals, and as was my duty, I jumped in to help them. Why is Dan just punching people? Where's your gun, soldier? Look out, <laughs> he's not using a gun. Okay, there we go. Along with Paladin Dance's Righteous Fist and my trusty minigun, we cleared out the ghouls easy peasy. Once I thought the battle was over, I engaged in lovely conversation with Paladin Dance, but my screen started shaking and Dogmeat let out a disheartening whimper. Dogmeat got pummeled into a pulp by a feral tank, so I gave the oversized fiend an emergency lobotomy with my minigun. After the ghouls were for sure taken care of, I continued my conversation with Dance, and I decided to help out his team by going on a mission with him to Arcjet Systems. Just right outside the building, though, was, you guessed it, a giant pack of feral ghouls. I went epic anime mode right <laughs> I went epic anime mode on them with my katana, slicing through their heads like the tatami mats I had trained with. After making each ghoul resemble diced tomatoes, we then headed in to Arcajet Systems, and we killed a bunch of synths and retrieved the uh, transmitter thingy. I also picked up this really nice laser gun, which would become one of my new primary weapons. Paladin Dance then went back to the police station, while I went to go store all my loot back at Hangman's Alley. At this point in the playthrough, I'd say I've been doing a pretty decent job at surviving this uh, zombie apocalypse, but there was one more scenario that I hadn't faced just yet. Nighttime. The past two times I was outside at night, I was able to get home and go to sleep before the ferals could hunt me down. Also, this whole time, an infestation had been brewing at the National Guard training yard. It had been growing for several days now, so it was probably at maximum capacity. And if I didn't take care of it soon, then the ferals would soon spill out and begin attacking nearby settlers. I had a genius idea. To kill two ghouls with one stone, as they would say. I decided that I would exterminate the ghoul infestation at nighttime. That way, there would be an absolutely ridiculous amount of ghouls. It'd be the perfect test to see if I can survive a horde that massive. After making all the proper preparations, I headed that way. As soon as I pulled up to the training yard, I was notified that ferals were out hunting. Just seconds later, I saw them. A pack of slow-moving feral shamblers patrolling the road. So, I pulled out the flamethrower and barbecued their meat. However, the sweet smell of cooked meat alerted every feral ghoul at the training yard, and they wanted a taste of it. Before I even had the opportunity to pull out my sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce, the entire horde rudely swarmed me. But I was ready with my meat cooking stick in hand, and I made sure that their meat was cooked well done. Also, a car just freaking exploded, taking out a bunch of ghouls, but also injuring dog meat. Don't worry, I stem packed him later. My flamethrower was easily able to melt through the horde, but of course the main problem was that they kept getting back up. So, like every good barbecue, I served up a side of mac and cheese with extra headshots to go with the cooked meat. But it seems that one of the neighbors wasn't a fan of my barbecue, and he shot me several times. I had no choice but to kill the settler in self-defense. But he still got me in the end, because he distracted me long enough for a feral to slap me with their stinky poison, and before I could heal, I died. Out of all the times I had to redo a fight because I died, this was easily my favorite. Something about lighting up a giant horde of ferals with a flamethrower at nighttime is simply... beautiful. Almost poetic, and I enjoyed every second of having to redo this battle. This time though, no settler got angry with me, and I was able to fry every single ghoul and finish them off. Right after that, I went into the armory to get me some of that sweet pre-war loot, but the door had a master lock on it, and I had not invested any points in the lock picking, so I simply zapped the lock with my laser gun. And surprise surprise, even the armory was filled with ghouls, but it wasn't nothing that a few zaps from a laser gun couldn't take care of. Besides the ghouls, the armory was filled with all kinds of pre-war military goodies. A big zappy gun, a big machine gun, several small arms, and even this huge combat drone which was placed on top of a box which cased an MP7. 
Yeah, uh, a lot of modders like putting their stuff here. Anyway, I was over-encumbered from all that loot, and I wasn't just gonna leave it there, so I slow-walked to my motorcycle and stored all of it in this tiny steel box. Don't ask me how the combat drone fits in there. It's a uh, fourth dimensional technology. And with that taken care of, I could go back to the National Guard training yard to clear out the inside of the buildings. To my surprise, though, another Shambler horde had spawned in the road, and so I pulled out my big zappy gun to kill them. It would be an easy team wipe, with the electricity jumping from ghoul to ghoul, but it also jumped onto this car, and it exploded, killing me, proving that no, I cannot be trusted with dangerous electric devices. When I reloaded my save, the horde was not there this time, so I waltzed on into the recruitment office with no resistance. But on the inside, there was indeed a few ghouls, and I cleared them out one by one with my shotgun. Moving into the barracks now, there was a humongous gang of zombified jarheads moping about. Instead of charging in head first, I gunned them down through this glory hole in the wall, and I was able to kill a good number of them. Surprisingly enough, some of the crayon munchers were smart enough to flank my position instead of sitting there helplessly. But that's when I pulled out my big zap zap gun and went to town on them. The zappy gun was phenomenal at clearing out the ghouls, but the downside here is that almost every single ghoul was guaranteed to get back up after being killed by it, so I had to switch to my mac and cheese tin. I was down to about the last ghoul, and just right after I had healed, he ambushed me with a fatal slap, thus killing me, proving that no, I would not win a professional slapping competition. And so, I had to do all of that all over again. This time though, I didn't feel like wasting my time, so I did rush straight in, and I zapped all of them with my big zappy gun. The arc jumped from ghoul to ghoul, so it was able to tank out almost the entire horde in just a few seconds. But as I just mentioned, it wasn't so good at getting headshots, so almost every single ghoul was able to get back up. Seeing that I was totally surrounded, I retreated with my mac and cheese in hand, forcing them to squeeze through a choke point and leading them directly into my spray of bullets. I was getting low on ammunition at this point, so I switched to my katana to deal with the remaining ghouls, and after a few more kills, I was notified that I had finally cleared the infestation, but there were still a few more ghouls there which are static spawns, so I killed them too. It was my job as exterminator to do so. Since it was nighttime and I was tired, I decided to go ahead and crash on one of the beds at the National Guard's barracks. For most people, sleeping in a room filled with decaying corpses may not be that uh, comfortable, but for me, it only fuels my power. When I awoke though, I found out that I was not sleeping alone. At least one of the ghoul's spirits had stayed behind. It was trapped in purgatory, so it haunted the room in which I resided. Out of everything, it took control of these cardboard boxes, one of which was fused into a ghoul's leg, thus causing the feral to breakdance and flail all over the place. <laughs> Dude, he's breakdancing so hard. It went on for about a minute, and finally, the spirit simmered down. But just as that ended, I heard a rattling from upstairs. Another ghoul was getting jiggy with it, this time with a trash can. <laughs> he's glitched around the trash bin. Look at him. <laughs> oh, dude, he's flying. There he goes. And he led me directly to the last remaining survivor of the ghouls in the barracks. Turns out I missed that one, but now, for sure, the entirety of the National Guard training yard was clear of the feral menace. Finally, knowing that I had 100% completed my extermination job, I left the National Guard training yard, and right as I did, I got another notification saying that an infestation had started brewing at the Suffolk County Charter School. This job was done, but my career in killing zombies wasn't over quite yet. However, I am just about done with making this video, because I am very tired, and it's taken entirely way too long to make. So, I'll just uh, deal with that later. After seven days of living through this zombie apocalypse, I had killed 752 creatures, most of which were ghouls, of course. So, at the end of the day, was I able to survive Fallout 4 modded into a zombie apocalypse? Yes, but not without dying a few times at least. Like I said, this is not the permadeath run, and all things considered, I'd say I did a pretty good job at fending off the Feral Menace. My biggest issue really was getting ambushed by the Lickers. But after killing hundreds of ghouls, it's evident that I am capable of finishing this playthrough. Uh, probably. The only question now is, can I beat Fallout 4 modded into a zombie apocalypse? Subscribe and stay tuned to find out. I'll see y'all in the next video.